Welcome to another amazing episode of Soul Chat. I am your host, Ebony Tatora. Who am I? For those of you that are new to my podcast, I am a sound healer. And what I do best, what I do best is I help women heal their past. So they can maximize their future. I focus on three things, inner child healing, mindset mastery, and mindfulness as the three pillars to really, really healing deep down. So not only can we heal what's back there, but that's so we can move forward with clarity, okay, and focus. And today is a very special episode because we just had the election. So I know everyone's in their feelings or most of us are. I mean, I say everyone, because it's not an everyone thing. Uh, and what I want to talk about today are the energy drainers, right? Because one thing we need to be mindful of is the overwhelmed mind, right? When our mind is overwhelmed, it affects your physical health. It affects your emotions. It affects your spirit. It affects your mental functions, right? So it's having a biological effect on you on every single level, whether it's an election or just things that are happening in your life, things that are happening in your job, things that are happening in relationships with your children, it's so important to manage a mind that feels overwhelmed. So before we even begin, do this with me and take a deep breath in through your nose. Breathing in clarity, deep breath out. Grounding yourself in that clarity. How many of us actually forget to do that deep inhale and exhale throughout our entire day. Actually, that's a natural way of breathing, which 99% of us, including myself, don't do all the time. We usually really breathe out of our nose very shallowly or we are mouth breathers, which either way leads to health issues in itself. But today we are talking about the energy drains of an overwhelmed mind. And like I said, I know that there's a feeling of being overwhelmed, right? And the biggest fallacy, at least that I believe, is that we don't have the power, right? Is that we don't have power. And when we are electing officials, um, it can play into our emotions with the, um, you know, the election process. You know, you see the commercials everywhere. And it's an interesting thing, right? Because as adults, we tell children, don't talk bad about someone else to feel better about yourself. But what do they do in the election? Do they not talk bad about the other party to make themselves look better, right? So as a society, I think in general, there is a shift and a change that is coming, whether you are on board with it or not, because it must, right? Just like that small example I just gave you, isn't that going to create confusion for future generations? Isn't that going to create people who think it's okay to bully and or talk down to other people because they see it on TV, they see it from our leaders, they see it from their parents, they see it from the people in their lives, right? And then we wonder why we have overwhelmed minds that do not operate in clarity. How can you operate in clarity if you're confused? How can you operate in clarity if you don't know who you are? How can you operate in clarity if you are not connecting with a higher power, right? Something bigger than you, a higher purpose, right? Something bigger than you. So today I wanted to talk to you briefly about the things that help. And if you see me looking down, it's because I have notes, because y'all know, <laughs> I love to talk, okay? I love to talk. Thank God for podcasts. Things that help. So we're gonna talk about things that are gonna help you extend your mental focus, right? We want to extend our mental focus. This is why I stick beside meditation. For all of you out there that think it's this process of closing your eyes and seeking peace, sometimes you're doing it to even go within and excavate. What's in your heart today? What's in your mind today? What is the foundation you want to set for your day? What do you want to pray over yourself, right? A lot of times we look at it as a practice of I'm going to sit down and find peace. And then we sit down and our mind's going a mile a minute and we think we haven't found that peace. Your mind is like a wild horse. If you have not tamed that horse with constant, persistent meditation, right, that moment will not come for you. You will not feel a sense of peace. You will sit down in your overwhelming feelings. 
right? You will sit down in your lack of clarity. I always recommend guided meditations. You can check out my meditations on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify. Just type in my name, Evni Tatora, and you will grab those meditations. My favorite is Divine Intervention because it is one of those meditations that teaches you by listening to it to take back your power. A tip that I'm going to give you today is to learn to do it passively. So when we listen to meditation passively, for those of us that are beginners, it's like New Year's resolutions. You're not going to go to the gym seven days a week if you've been going for zero. It's not practical and you will fail, <laughs> right? You got to start slow so you can build up. So the easiest way to start meditating is put that meditation on. Put on divine intervention as you're going to bed. Put on divine intervention while you're getting in the shower. Put on divine intervention while you're brushing your teeth, right? And even though you're not sitting down and closing your eyes, listening to the affirmations will literally change the chemical responses in your body, the way your thoughts are going. Remember I talked about that horse? You're telling that horse, we're going down this path today, right? And there, there may be some resistance, right? Even for me, when I sit down sometimes in meditation, there is some resistance based off of having an overwhelmed mind, yes? You wanna to learn to create freedom of space, right? So sometimes you need to take space from things, right? Stop watching the video, stop rehashing the thing that's upsetting you, stop talking to the person, stop sending long paragraphs, right? Sometimes you have to create space so that you can process it and reach a point of clarity and peace. Right. That's why they say sometimes the best response is no response or silence, because we have to learn how to process things from a place of not reacting and responding. Right. And, and we overwhelm the mind when we're, you know, you're trying to get your point across or you're you're upset that something happened. Right. You're upset about the election and you're watching back videos or you're watching what's going to happen next. Right. You're glued to the news. If you don't know about chakras, which is just a fancy way of saying the energy in your body right? When your heart is broken, your heart hurts physically. When you want to say something out of your throat and you don't, you get that knot in your throat. When you overthink too much, you get headaches. So those are just a few examples. The number one disruptor of the root chakra, which means you should feel safe, you should feel grounded, and you should feel supported, is the news, is social media, right? So if you are glued to these uh, channels of information, you are literally disrupting your ability to feel rooted. So now that you know this information, that is a choice. That is a choice that you are making regularly. Because when you create space, you're gonna create space for ideas. You're gonna create space for invention. And you are tapping into feeling more present. How many of you listening to me right now would desire like just to feel present, not to have your mind in the future, excuse me, not to have your mind in the past, but to be here. So many people can't do that. So many people, their mind is in the future. So many people, their mind is in the past, right? We're running scenarios of things that have not even happened yet. And according to the law of attraction, you think what you get. So if you're thinking worst case scenario, you're going to get worst case scenario. So don't be like, I knew this would happen. You should be saying, I created this. I created this scenario. Right. And part of taking our power back and stop overwhelming our mind is to understand you are creating the overwhelm. Right. And a lot of times it's because of our lack of attention and intention. We have another podcast on that. <laughs> Can't tell you the number right now, but there's another podcast on attention and intention. Right. It's because of our lack of attention and intention in our own lives. If we're not paying attention to the things, the conversation, the social media, that rubs us a little wrong, and you're getting rubbed wrong all day, right? At some point, you're going to feel overwhelmed. Let's also start valuing the pause. And I just talked about that, right? Creating that freedom of space, that's the pause. Sometimes you have to put things on pause. In my family, there's a great saying that says, when you, know, when you don't know what to do, do nothing. Right? And you don't know what to do, do nothing. Don't overwhelm yourself with busyness. Don't overwhelm yourself with more things. Right, This is why we are so much in a society where a lot of people are really burnt out. They're burnt out from life. They're burnt out from their jobs. They're burnt out from relationships because we haven't had pause. Right, This is why we look forward to the weekends. This is why we look forward to vacations. Every day 
should technically feel like that. Why? Because God did not birth you into this life to be to, to, to live and struggle forever. Right? Some of us have some karmic cycles, some soul contracts we gotta live out, right? But you were not sent here to to just navigate struggle. You were sent here to alchemize it, to turn overwhelm into peace, to turn peace into clarity. Because when you have clarity, you have everything. You have everything, right? So another thing I want to invite you to do, I've given you two of my amazing ones, right? Meditation, guided meditation, even if you're loosely listening to affirmation, find the affirmations you need. Second thing, deep breaths. Let's do this again. Take a deep breath into your nose. And gain clarity if you can have a moment. Breathing that clarity out into the world. You do that enough times, even just one time. It's amazing. The next thing is placing your hand over your heart. The hand of healing powers. When you place it over your heart, when you're typically feeling anxiousness, frustration, overwhelm, your heart is in a, at an accelerated rate, right? Those of us have Apple watches or devices that measure our sleep and our heart rate, you're going to notice the things that get your heart rate accelerated, right? And a beautiful tool to just take your hand. Place it over your heart, right? It's like commanding your heart. Chill. I got you. Right? And your heart has got you as well. Your heart is a muscle. It has more than enough capacity to love you, to give love, to guide you, to support you, and, and allow it. A lot of us are not even allowing our bodies to support us. Okay? The other things are very practical when you're overwhelmed. Are you eating good? Are you drinking enough water? Are you getting enough sleep? Do you use your break to take naps? Okay. Just a 20 minute nap will help you go so far. Okay. <laughs> like I am the, I used to be the queen of naps as a teen. And then I got into the hustle culture and I have returned. Okay. Because I love a good nap. Sometimes you're, just, you're not getting enough sleep. Right. We talked about this. Right. An overwhelmed mind leads to what? Right. It's going to affect your physical health, your emotions, your spirit, and your mental functions. So that's the aggravation you're feeling, right? And aggravation is not just aggravating. It means it's a sign. It's like a stop sign, a yield sign. It's saying, hello, there are things that are happening and I need you to get on board. There are things that are happening and I need you to go get that oil change. I need you to tune up your engine, right? I need you to replace your transmission because what happens is if you don't know this, 99% of all diseases are caused by stress, right? And if we're not managing our stress, we're just living a life being blown around like a hay, like a hay, a haystack, right? Like a tumbleweed in the desert. And I believe 90% of this life is learning. Take your power back. Take your power back. These are simple ways, and sometimes simplicity is overlooked because it's so simple. Right? I'm just sharing with a friend today. You know, for those of you that are Bible believers, I, I love the Bible, I love Jesus. So I'm going to give you some references that relate to me, right? That people perish for a lack of knowledge. We don't apply the knowledge we know because it feels too simple. It feels too simple. And sometimes simplicity the best solution, right? So remember that. If you're interested in bringing in new energy, right? Lowering your stress, improving your mental performance, supporting your digestive and blood sugar balances, right? These are tips that are going to help you get there. And again, they're simple, but they're effective because you already know what it feels like to live in chaos. Don't need your desire. To live a life where you can experience the latter, where you can experience peace, where you can experience clarity, and you can where you can experience feeling unbothered, no matter what's happening in the world. That's one of my favorite meditations. No matter what's happening in the world, right? And find your peace. The last thing I'm going to recommend is get in community. I am in a lot of beautiful communities. I am in a community that I create called the self-love community. I also am a part of the divine feminine leader community. 
and these communities help me to stay in my power, to remember who I am. A lot of life can make you forget who you are and whose you are. So if this podcast resonates with you and you love it, first and foremost, take that deep breath. Write these things down and start implementing them. The second thing is share it with a friend because you never know who needs it. The third thing is leave me a comment. If you're watching this on YouTube and or Spotify, leave me a comment and let me know if even, even just this talk was refreshing to reminding you of who you get to be in this lifetime. Once again, my name is Esme Tutora and this is Soul Chat and I will see you on the next episode. I love you so much and thank you so much for tuning in. Back to me.